Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Service Management Leadership. Today's video is the third in our series on best practices for your request fulfillment process. And I want to talk about an ITIL view, not real, really process nerdy type of stuff, but just best practice. And so number one is separate your request fulfillment from your incident and change management processes. That sounds easy to do, but it's not widely done. And so ITIL, through industry experts and many practitioners of ITIL, have argued this for years. And so when we moved to an ITIL version 3 a few years ago, there was the focus on the business and trying to bring out, separate these processes just so we can focus on serving the needs of the business. Second of all, request fulfillment needs to be driven by standard service requests that are defined in the service catalog. These standard services can be onboarding and things like what we talked about before, but it could be generating a report, it could be pinging a service, it could be by pinging a service, it maybe your network admin pings an application to see if it's up or not, just to try to isolate an issue. Your standard service request may be something like, uh, can you run this report for me on the third Tuesday of every month so that I can know what my business application is doing? Also, I want to talk about having a self-service portal as part of your core function of your process. This portal is can be and is usually part of your ITSM tool but this is where it all comes together. This is where your service catalog meets request fulfillment and allows a menu of choices to the business. And one of the critical success factors for request fulfillment is the need to publish a service catalog as quickly as possible, as readily accessible menu as possible, and so that this user understands their choices. It also allows a single point of contact could be your service desk, usually is, for all service requests. And I say single point of contact. It's usually the web portal, but if somebody has a call, has to call, we want them to call the service desk and not the individual service delivery teams. That makes sense, doesn't it? We want to centralize all of the activity through the portal and our service desk. Also, what's, what request fulfillment does, and this is huge, it addresses the need for authorization management. If you want to order a software that's $10, it may have a different approval or authorization than one that's 10 million, right? And so every organization is different. And so having this portal in this request fulfillment process allows you to set different thresholds for different levels of authorization. And so Standardizing your services in the service catalog, in the service portal, allows you standardization and how those are fulfilled and the expectations. This is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Please like or share the video. Subscribe to our channel. We look forward to having you on our channel very soon. And please leave me feedback or connect with me on LinkedIn. I hope you have a great, great day. Bye.